Dear colleagues, friends, I'm glad to be here again with you to share now nearly annually uh, latest data about the question how long we can or have to use the um, Pella concept for our patients. And with Douglas Mann, I think I learned really fantastic um, uh, concepts. And the major concept is what I could understand is that tissue injury and unloading severely belongs together. And probably this can be best studied also his hypothesis in patients with cardiogenic shock due, for instance, myocarditis. You see that here those patients, especially when they have a giant cell myocarditis, they have thick walls, probably you could also think this is in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, but only the biopsy will tell you what kind of inflammation you have here, and depending on these diseases, you see here also clearly the prognosis of those patients, which is in those patients very often very sad. The mechanisms behind are probably relatively the same. It's not so important whether you have stress due to hypertension, myocardial infarction, or that what happened during aging and or myocarditis. Douglas told us that our belief in the initiation of the understanding of cardiac modeling was also extremely focused on the activation of neurohumoral um, growth factor systems. And we learned over the time that inflammation fibrosis then also mechanoreceptors like integrin receptors belongs to in a form of a circulus viciosus which can understand the effects important for remodeling. So that makes integrin receptors and unloading to an important pathophysiological mechanism which we probably should target in our patients. And if you say that Michano stress is the major trigger under these conditions. We also will say that with Impella, we have here a much more important or the only possible tool to do an unloading to reduce mechanical stress compared, for instance, due to the NECMO. This is principally done very often in patients with acute myocarditis. ECMOs, short time circulatory supports are described and we see here in patient where we have done an unloading for more than 20 days in patient with an HIV disease according to a severe cardiac myocarditis where it was clear that we had no chance due to the background disease, the AIDS, to treat the patient with immunosuppressive therapies. So pure unloading for 20 days induced after these three weeks um, an improvement of cardiac function. And we did biopsies of those patients. You could see that unloading was associated with a reduction of the expression of integrin receptors. Well, I would say this is a surrogate parameter for molecular unloading. And this was associated with an improvement of anti-inflammatory responses, including those from the immune system, and an improvement of titine contractility. So that was a first trial and observation, and we came up to the idea and the hypothesis is that circulatory support by unloading is probably not all behind that here. The patient was in the shock scenario, but probably really includes additional disease modifying effects which are important for bridge to recovery. We know that very often the bridge for recovery scenario, if you really want to target the tissue itself and not only the circulatory support, you need more time. And for that, we believe that a prolonged impreller approach, which we abbreviated with the synonym propeller approach, especially in myocarditis, had been born. And we investigated that now in more than 20 patients in our center. And the most important of them I would like to share with you. We have here an about 65-year-old patient. He was in a pre-cardiogenic shock due to a myocarditis, which had been controlled and saved by the diagnosis by biopsies. The steroids did not work, so it was clear that he needed in circulatory support, but he was not at shock. That's important. So we implanted here in a patient. He was at risk for shock. Uh, the impeller via a subclavia approach, and um, he was running around and our hospital, I can tell you, we let it in for more than 50 days. 
And you see here in the first days, only the steroid strategy was not beneficial. We combined that with the impeller during the propeller approach. And we see here that this is also meaningful. This is a 5.5 five impeller under these conditions that the pressure volume loops really showed you the unloading when the machine is on. And if the machine is off, you see that you have a right shift under these conditions. So real data in our patient. And what is probably more important is when the patient is fully supported, as you can see here, the left ventricle is not really pumping. But if you stop the support, just one minute later, suddenly the ventricle starts to pump. So we believe that under this condition, the unloading is a well-controlled, let's say, stunning mechanism, which is probably meaningful to, to induce a further healing program under these clinical scenarios. As I told you, we let that in for more than 50 days and probably extremely important and interesting for you, the ejection fraction was already 40 or nearly by 50, but still the pump was in because we believe that unloading is not only important for circulatory, but also for disease modifying approach. And this hypothesis needed, of course, more meat. And we did biopsies and a lot of analyzing. And first, what you can see here is, this is the protein expression of this patient in the disease without unloading. And just three, four days later, a re-biopsy taken, you see that the complete protein levels has changed. And interesting, exactly that what Douglas Mann has shown us, we see that here. We see the improvement in cardiac function by an improvement of titate phosphorylation, energy metabolism, collagen expression, anti-inflammatory systems, and integrin receptors. And that's not what you see here. When we say that integrin receptors is a molecular surrogate parameter for unloading, when the pump is in until this time point, integrin receptors are downregulated. And as soon as you take off the pump, the integrin receptors come back to normal. And this was associated in parallel with a reduction of immune competent cells inducing or went in parallel to the healing program what we have seen in this patient. However, sometimes the world is a little bit more complicated and this patient had bad luck. It was clear that after two months unloading an anti-immune suppressive therapy is still necessary. Due to our experience, we know that this disease is probably healed after six months, but six months an impeller to induce was probably a little too much. So we gave an immune suppressive therapy and he got a side effect. You see that here in life threatening and abscess. So we had to stop the immunosuppressor therapy and he was not any more willing to do so. But he became worse. And so you see that here, immune competent cells came back. He came back again, recurrent myocarditis, shock, and then he came very late. We had to induce an ELVET. What we have seen with the ELVET, we have seen the same. Due to unloading again, immune competent cells were reduced. So this is a very nice proof of concept patient showing you that unloading improves inflammation induced remodeling. If you do the unloading via an impeller or via an elvet, per se is not so important. The concept is this, what I think is important for us. So that was a clinical scenario of a patient who was, let's say, in the danger to become in the shock. What happens when the patient is already in the shock and has a severe myocarditis? Is that also working or do we have here probably already a point of no return? And those patients sometimes we need also an ECMELA under these conditions to combine an increase of non-unloading by the ECMO which can be neutralized by the impeller itself and you know nobody else than Dan Burkhoff can make such nice slides. Thanks Dan for that to explain what we are doing. So you see that here, this is the echo of a young lady with a severe myocarditis, not only left ventricle, but also the right ventricle is severely impaired. That is clear. You cannot help this patient just with an elvet or with an impeller. You have to combine ECMO with impeller under these conditions. You see that here, over the time, right ventricular function improved. We could de-escalate the ECMO, and then we went to the approach again that we induced in propeller, so we have taken the impeller from the femoral side back to the brachial side. 
she was running around, we have taken our biopsies, and we did again the same analyzings I had shown you before, where we can see again integrin receptors down-regulated during ECMELA or propeller approach. If you reduce the unloading, integrin receptors come back to normal. But here, since we were able also to give further the steroids, the pharmacological approach maintained and safe that what we have won during the unloading approach under this condition. So you see that here, after uh, two months, nearly complete healing of this lady. So the second conclusion is unloading improves inflammation-induced remodeling, that's sure, but this effect itself is not enough because due to the pump, of course, you're not able to heal or to target the major reason of the disease, and this means to maintain the effect of the unloading concept, pharmacological immune-modulating therapy is necessary after unloading, to bridge this effect until total recovery can occur. What would happen if we go to the other side of a patient, where we say we have more or less an end-stage cardiogenic shock, where not in myocarditis was the trigger? What would we see here if we come up with an impeller or propeller concept? Is here probably a point of no return? So let's see this patient here, really low ejection fraction. We did our biopsies, there's no inflammation inside. We gave the impeller and the propeller concept inside. However, whether the propeller was on or off, the left ventricular function did not improve. And you see that here also that if you stop here the impeller, the conductance catheter shows you no beneficial change in the pressure volume loops. And that worked directly, not in the direction as we have seen the myocarditis patients. Although the patient was clearly unloaded, alpha EDP was reduced, integrin receptors still stayed high. So we have here a mismatch of molecular unloading to mechanical unloading. And that was associated also with further increase of inflammatory cell presence under these conditions. So here in those patients where we see that the impeller itself was not effective enough that the patient has a recovery, we see the mismatch between mechanical and molecular unloading under these conditions showing that integrin receptors are still high, although alpha EDP is low. And we did our stress test showing in the hand grip that alpha EDP was rising immediately up to 30 and that it was clear that this patient has the strategy to choose bridge to Elvet. So that means this is my third conclusion, a mismatch of mechanical and molecular unloading correlates with no recovery. So I would like to summarize this concept as the follow. If you have a fulminant myocarditis, you do your unloading, you get, of course, a hemodynamical unloading and a molecular unloading. And this is associated with a reduction of stress and immune cells in the heart. If you reduce the mechanical unloading, and you combine that with further with steroids, you have a very good chance that you have here bridge to recovery under these conditions. However, for instance, in end-stage conditions, then you see that unloading mechanically, of course, will work. The pump will work, but molecularly, technically, that is not working. You get an uncontrolled inflammatory response. So the mismatch shows here that the patient will have no chance really to recover, and you need a bridge to Alvet concept for those patients. So this is my end. This is our experience at the charity for more than 20 patients. That is really that what we are doing, the patients after occlusion of coronary heart disease get their biopsies, they get the conductance catheter, they get clear weaning programs, and together with molecular changes and hematocolic changes, we are in the right way, so we hope so to be able to differentiate between patients who would have a benefit from prologue unloading for bridge to recovery, or those where we say this is the right strategy to give the patient to the heart surgeons. Thank you very much for your attention. As you can see, that kind of work is not work, it is fun. Thanks again.
have any questions for Professor Trupe? And thank you, that was a wonderful talk. When <coughs> you see these patients uh, coming into the emergency room, I'm just trying to think about what is your overall strategy as a system to have uh, early situational awareness, particularly with fulminant myocarditis. So we know these patients, you see them uh, when they roll into the ED or the ICU, within two or three hours, uh, they're intubated, uh, several hours they're impressors, and then they just die if you don't do something about it. So do you have a protocol in which you reach out to frontline clinicians about it and how much you wait from the first time that you see them, so, so time zero, to uh, uh, proceeding with Impella? Do you go through inotropes uh, or other devices or do you just go yeah. directly? So, I mean, when these patients are they're so hemodynamically uh, compromised, we start usually, for instance, with the liver down or that what is necessary to give them some inotropes. And as soon as the patient has to go to the cath lab, and I think this is every time important, even you believe that the patient is still as young, you bring him to the cath lab to see whether there's a uh, coronary abnormality. Probably you do not believe in a coronary heart disease of a 30 years old patient, but you can have spasms, you can have embolies, whatever, you have to do so. And if the coronary heart disease is excluded in my department, it is a must to do the biopsy. And if the patient comes at three o'clock in the morning, we are inside in the left ventricle, we then also doing the biopsy, and we get the result in the biopsy um, about inflammation, yes or no. Later differentiation, virus, yes or no, however, can have time. You get it in the next 48 hours. So levosimendan, with or without the pump, uh, in the uh, cath lab scenario with the biopsy is something what we do together. And I think that's extremely important uh, to do so. Don't bring the patients three times to the cath lab. First, coronary heart disease, then pump implantation, and then the biopsy. That does not make sense. Great talk, uh, and, a, and a very important uh, experience that you share here. Um, it was unclear to me when you actually do the timing of that test to decide if the patient has to go on to transplantation. And so, uh, because you have the 5.5 yeah. device in there, you, you have a lot of time. So when do you make that decision then? So for those patients, due to my experience, I see something when there is a chance for bridge for recovery, let's say in the next first five to eight days. I think this is usually also the time when you have the ECMO on board where you say in the next eight days you have to make a decision because the complication rate starts. And it does not mean that in the first eight days the ejection fraction must be normal. But I see when I reduce, for instance, the, uh, the, uh, the unloading uh, frequency, whether the ventricle starts, I see in the curves whether contractility starts, and then I get a feeling whether there can you expect something. If you see no change, then after 10 days, and then I have also my biopsy results, there's also no target to treat. Usually I give them up, I really have to say that. So five hours ago, a young man, 30 years old, got an Elvet, which I have treated with a propeller, 5.0, and the biopsy. I did a re-biopsy because I could not believe it. The patient was 30 years old. But the biopsy was empty, so he got an impeller, I think, uh, and an Elvet two hours ago. So that is that what we do, hemodynamic analyzing plus biopsies to really make the right decisions. Thank you for your talk. You showed us that uh, the change in, in the green or inflammatory markers can show us whether there's a response or not to the unloading and remove the device. Do the absolute values of the beginning matter? Like if somebody starts with lower or higher in the greens, do they, does it play a role that could potentially save us some biopsies down the road? So the question is with respect to the viral? Yes. Yes, that's a very important. To, to my experience, um, and I have about 250 biopsies per year, I see only three or four patients where I have a significant virus, like a Coxsackie virus persistence. I would say the majority, at least in my area, I do not, uh, I have mostly this autoimmune uh, situation. The virus is already cleared, but the immune system is still attacking the heart. Since this is not for 100%, I cannot recommend 
not to take the biopsies, um, but usually the, biops the viruses are not um, disturbing us in the concept I just have shown you. Thank you very much.